Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are digging into some new research that I think has some fairly interesting implications for the development of foundational models. Now, we're getting a little bit wonky in this one, but I actually think it's fairly significant and touches on not just model design and training processes, but AI ethics as well. Over the weekend, I started to notice people posting about research from Google called RLAIF, Scaling Reinforcement Learning from Human Feedback with AI Feedback. Now, at core here is a concept called reinforcement learning from human feedback. RLHF is one of the key techniques by which we align large language models with human preferences. Now, Hugging Face did a great blog last December explaining this concept. The entire blog post is worth a read, but here's how they saw ChatGPT explain RLHF. And keep in mind, this was an explain it like I'm five example. ChatGPT says, imagine you have a robot named Rufus who wants to learn how to talk like a human. Rufus has a language model that helps him understand words and sentences. First, Rufus will say something using his language model. For example, he might say, I am a robot. Then a human will listen to what Rufus said and give him feedback on whether it sounded like a natural sentence a human would say. The human might say, that's not quite right, Rufus. Humans don't usually say, I am a robot. They might say, I'm a robot or I am a machine. Rufus will take this feedback and use it to update his language model. He will try to say the sentence again using the new information he received from the human. This time he might say, I'm a robot. The human will listen again and give Rufus more feedback. This process will continue until Rufus can say sentences that sound natural to a human. Now, as this paper from Google points out, Reinforcement learning from human feedback is one of the, quote, key drivers of success in modern conversational language models like ChatGPT and BARD. By training with reinforced learning, language models can be optimized on complex sequence-level objectives that are not easily differentiatable with traditional supervised fine-tuning, end quote. What the goal of this study was, was to compare reinforcement learning from human feedback versus reinforcement learning from artificial intelligence feedback. They write, in this work, we directly compare RLAIF against RLHF on the task of summarization. Given a text and two candidate responses, we assign a preference label using an off-the-shelf LLM. We then train a reward model on the LLM preferences with a contrastive loss. Finally, we fine-tune a policy model with reinforcement learning using the reinforcement model to provide rewards. Now, fascinatingly, what they found is that RLAIF achieved comparable performance to RLHF measured in two different ways. First, compared to a supervised fine-tuning baseline that didn't have a reinforcement learning process, the results of both RLAIF and RLHF were preferred by humans a significant portion of the time. For RLAIF, it was preferred 71% of the time. For RLHF, it was preferred 73% of the time, which the researchers say is basically statistically equal. Now, when compared head-to-head, -head, RLHF and RLAIF were both preferred 50% of the time. In other words, they were preferred an equivalent amount of times by human judges. Now, there are a couple reasons why this is significant. As the researchers put it, quote, the need for high-quality human labels is an obstacle for scaling up RLHF, and one natural question is whether artificially generated labels can achieve comparable results. So first, there is just simply a question of scale. Any process that involves humans is inherently going to be less scalable, more time-consuming, more challenging, and more costly than a process where the humans can be replaced by artificial intelligence. Now, a second piece, though, which isn't really discussed in this paper as much, is the human cost and AI ethics questions of the actual reinforcement learning process. There have been a number of articles about this challenge that have come out over the last month or two. One in The Guardian was called, It's Destroyed Me Completely, Kenyan Moderators Decry Toll of Training of AI Models. The Guardian piece tells the story of Mofat Okinyi, who as part of a previous job with ChatGPT, would view up to 700 text passages a day, many, he said, that depicted graphic sexual violence. From The Guardian, quote, He recalls he started avoiding people after having read texts about rapists and found himself projecting paranoid narratives onto people around him. Then last year, his wife told him he was a changed man and left. Slate's Alex Kantrowitz wrote a piece about this in May. It was called The Horrific Content a Kenyan Worker Had to See While Training ChatGPT, and reads, This type of work has been crucial for bots like ChatGPT and Google's Bard to function and to feel so magical, but the human cost of the effort has been widely overlooked. In a process called Reinforcement Learning from Human Feedback, or RLHF, bots become smarter as humans label content, teaching them how to optimize based on feedback. AI leaders, including OpenAI's Sam Altman, have praised the practice's technical effectiveness, yet they rarely talk about the cost some humans pay to align the AI systems with our values. Now, a big question in both of these pieces is what OpenAI and the contracting company SAMA that they worked with 
did or didn't provide these Kenyan workers, which is a really important set of questions to ask. But the broader point is just to acknowledge that reinforcement learning in the context of LLMs is not without cost. Now, other companies have tried other approaches for exactly these concerns, both around scalability as well as around the harm to individuals who are involved in the RLHF process. One of the more notable of these is Anthropic's constitutional approach, which they explain as, quote, giving language models explicit values determined by a constitution rather than values determined implicitly via large-scale human feedback. Of RLHF, they write, this process has several shortcomings. First, it may require people to interact with disturbing outputs. Second, it does not scale efficiently. As the number of responses increases or the models produce more complex responses, crowd workers will find it difficult to keep up with or fully understand them. Third, reviewing even a subset of outputs requires substantial time and resources, making this process inaccessible for many researchers. So given all of this, shouldn't we just switch now to reinforcement learning from artificial intelligence entirely? Well, even the Google researchers who produced this paper caution against running that far that fast. They write, while this work highlights the potential of RLAIF, we note some limitations on these findings. First, this work only explores the task of summarization, leaving an open question about generalizability to other tasks. Second, we did not estimate whether LLM inference is advantageous versus human labeling in terms of monetary costs. Additionally, there remain many interesting open questions, such as whether RLHF combined with RLAIF can outperform a single approach alone, how well using an LLM to directly assign rewards performs, whether improving AI labeler alignment translates to improved final policies, and whether using an LLM labeler the same size as the policy model can further improve the policy, i.e. whether a model can self-improve. We leave these questions for future work, and we hope that this paper motivates further research in the area of RLAIF. Now, even beyond just having comparable results, the paper also pointed out that, quote, RLAIF appears less likely to hallucinate than RLHF. The hallucinations in RLHF are often plausible but are inconsistent with the original text, meaning that it's not just potentially scalability in replacing the human cost of the reinforcement learning, but that there actually could be benefits as well in terms of model performance. Still, to the extent that Google's goal was to provoke more interest in further exploring this area, I think it's certainly going to be successful in that. In many ways, it's also part of a larger conversation around what parts of the AI model training process can be done by AI versus need human input. One big topic of conversation throughout the year has been the concern around model collapse, which is something that might theoretically happen as AI trains on more AI-generated content. However, recently, when Llama 2 was released, one of the things that Meta noted was that the model that was trained on synthetic data actually outperformed models that were trained on non-synthetic data, bringing up a lot of questions about how much our assumptions about model collapse actually hold true. Now, if you want to take it from the biggest implications perspective, it's really just how little we know about these models and about how to improve them. And for as advanced as we are, it feels very much like we are at the most infantile stages of figuring these things out. In that context, I find it worthwhile to approach everything with a certain base level of humility and an appreciation that the next research paper that comes out might fundamentally change our understanding about how the entire space works. For now, though, some really interesting stuff to chew on with some really big potential benefits. I will, of course, include a link to the research in the news in the show notes, and I hope you take some time to go check it out. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching, and until next time, peace.